The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com at the tail end of the Miami Boat Show taking a look at a brand new model from Mako, the 236. She's been completely redesigned from a blank sheet of paper from the hull up. Let's see how they've done as I put it through a performance evaluation and features inspection. The most significant feature, a standard hull side dive door with an opening 18 inches wide. Standard, most others will make this optional if they offer it at all. And look at the beefy hardware Mako uses. There's a fresh water shower. This is connected to a six gallon water tank. Behind the leaning post, plenty of open cockpit space. Two and a half feet, fore and aft. Side to side, six and a half feet. In the center of the transom, flip out bench seat. Notice the gas assist struts on both sides that ease the opening of this bench. Notice the decking is guttered and it leads to two deck drains, one in each corner. In both corners of the transom, 22 gallon live wells. The transom seat back is removable just behind four rod holders. To both sides of the cockpit, 135 quart fish boxes slash storage compartments. Notice that they're finished on the inside, the hatches are finished on the underside, and there's heavy duty stainless struts holding them open. Take a look at this. In the middle of the cockpit deck, a mechanical compartment. All the components in one spot. Most significantly, look at this, a sea chest with two raw water feeds right inside. Air Max transducers are standard, two of them. Power steering unit in the center is standard on this model. It's in between two batteries to the side bulkheads. Gulper grouper pumps for the live wells. And again, look at the hatch, finished on both sides, heavy duty hardware to the port quarter, freshwater washdown, and battery charger. Behind the leaning post, four more rod holders just underneath, an 84 quart cooler. And notice it's on a sliding tray. To both sides, there's undergunnel rod storage. Just above, padded bolsters going all the way around from midships to the bow. Powder coated rails just above that. Just above is a midship cleat. This is the first of six pull-up cleats on this boat. Making our way to the bow, 18 inch side decks to both sides. The bow seats are arranged in a typical V seating fashion. Underneath there's 247 quart fish boxes. They're insulated and self draining. The seat backs are standard and removable. And I like that Mako adds charging ports next to each seat. Notice how the powder coated rails continue forward along with the padded bolsters. Just in front of the console is a built in seat. Notice the multiple tones of upholstery and the custom embossed shark from Mako. There's storage underneath a 52 quart insulated cooler, 32 inches wide and to the sides. I really like flip down armrests, not flip up armrests that have to be released with a latch underneath that creates a pinch point. In the center of the deck, a 278 quart bow storage compartment. Notice inside there's a holder for a five gallon bucket. There are four sockets for carbon fiber poles that will support a bimini top and another one can go in the stern. Notice the optional drink holder slash rod holder. At the four peak, there's a standard anchor locker. I'd like to see a wire to hold this hatch open so it's not resting against the hinges. That's gonna fail at some point. Inside, an optional Lumar windlass. Notice there are anchor keepers to both sides so that if you don't get the windlass option, you can still have a Danforth anchor stored here. Road storage access, just underneath. To the starboard side, there's access to the head. Inside, completely finished. Choose from either a porta potty or a pump out head. There's six feet of overhead clearance inside to the back bulkhead, battery switches, and all of your circuit breakers. Now let's take a look at the helm. Soft touch across the top. There's a recessed area in the back. Compass is mounted in the center. I'd rather see that in line with the wheel. Just below, a nine inch Garmin display, two SmartCraft displays, and a Fusion stereo, which is connected to four lighted Fusion speakers. Electrical switches are just underneath, and we've got a control for the windlass, trim tabs, and the digital throttle and shift. The steering wheel option is a tilt base. We've got two stainless steel beverage holders with connectivity just above and notice that Mako has now moved the ignition out of the knee strike zone. This boat also has a twin engine option so if that's the case we've got ignitions just ahead of both beverage holders. Kill switch is just below and notice below that there's a step for adding your feet to and your feet can also tuck underneath it so we can get nice and close to the console. And I really like the optional anti-fatigue mat. Now back to this Garmin for a minute. There's something that's standard on this boat that I really like. 
It's connected to a C-Zone switching system, so we have electronic switching on all of our electrical components. The more important features are still located down below, the anchor light, the nav light, the horn, so we don't have to go into the C-Zone system for that. But more importantly, this is standard. And if something goes wrong with this panel, we can still manually connect all the switches just by going down into the head and going to the fuse panel and moving it from an upper position to a lower position, and now they're all mechanical switches instead of electronic. Up above, the hardtop is optional, standard is a canvas T-top. This model includes LED lighting, an electronics box, supports that integrate into grab rails. The helm seat is double wide, includes flip up bolsters and notice how they're wrap around bolsters for additional comfort and underneath a flip down footrest. Now let's talk about options for the 236, starting a live well in back of the leaning post and look at this, four rod holders at the back of the post five at the trailing edge of the hardtop with two more to the outsides and notice that we've got outriggers to both sides. The hardtop will come pre-rigged for the outriggers with a metal plate. We drill through the metal plate to install the outriggers. This hardtop also has additional spreader lights. The helm can also have two 12-inch Simrad displays and not only are these connected to the C-Zone system but they're also connected to the Mercury outboards so we don't have the SmartCraft displays. The bow can also have an additional table that can be lowered and filler cushions can be added to make a forward sun pad. The Mako 236cc has a length overall of 23 feet 4 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches and a draft of 18 inches. With an empty weight of 5,010 pounds, 70% fuel and 3 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 6,752 pounds. With a single 300 horsepower Mercury Verado turning a 17 pitch Mirage Plus propeller, we reached the top speed of 44 miles per hour at 6,000 RPM. Best cruise was reached at 4,500 RPM and 26.9 miles per hour. At that speed, the 11.4 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.4 miles per gallon in a range of 288 miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 136 gallon total fuel capacity. We can power the 236 with a 250 horsepower Verado, or we can go up to 350 horsepower Additionally, we can opt for twin 150 XLs, which are also four strokes. With the 300, she was very responsive. We came on plane in 3.8 seconds, accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 12.8 seconds, and continued through 30 in 19.1 seconds. She's got exciting handling characteristics. When you put her into a hard turn, she will grab in that turn, so be hanging on. It's best to take turns a lot more shallower. Your passengers will appreciate it a lot more. We had relatively calm conditions on our test day, but crossing the wake of the camera platform showed that we had good transitions through the waves. If we go through the waves at full speed, there is some hull slap, but knock it down to cruise speed and it's a much more comfortable ride. She leans 15 degrees into the turns. Only at full speed do we get a chine walk in those turns. Back down to cruising speed and they're very comfortable. If you put it into a power turn, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that the outboard is trimmed all the way down, otherwise you will get some prop ventilation. In my opinion, Mako did a really nice job on the 236. She's completely new from the hull up. Standard, she's loaded with great features, but she's also got options available that make a good boat even better. And that's my look at the 236cc from Mako. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.